So I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate for this, but I'm gonna show you the secret ingredients to making your AI footage look real. Now this is a custom process that I did from beginning to end through trial and error. So we're actually gonna dive into multiple different softwares for these processes. Now, sometimes you have to sacrifice convenience for quality, but remember we're using AI. So can we even say we're really sacrificing convenience if I can do it all from the computer? Now I can tell you it's not going to be typing over and over hyper-realistic, ultra-realistic, super-realistic, because all that's doing is the AI is turning your texture and your clarity all the way up until you can basically taste every single pixel within your video. That's not realistic. So first, we have to start with your goal. So up first, we're gonna go into ChatGPT. You can use the free version if you'd like. Up first, we're gonna answer a question like, what is the central human subject? And we need to get detail, age, gender, ethnicity, notable facial features, body type, and any defining traits. This is where we're really gonna be able to add maybe imperfections, scars, acne, the things that really tell a human apart from AI. So one of the biggest keys in creating a realistic AI character is imperfections. Next, you're gonna go into what is the emotional tone. So that means the facial features, that's going to that's going to actually have a lot more pull than you'd expect. If you'd like to already have the system built for you, uh, I've created a few bots that are going to go a little bit further than just asking you the 20 questions. It'll give suggestions, it'll give examples, and if it's missing things, it'll actually go further in making sure that it has all the information it needs. Um, so you can check out those bots in the description. What is the setting or environment around him? I, so whenever you're starting to go into the setting or the environment, we need to lean heavy into not only if it's a suburb or a downtown area, but also what is the style? Is there graffiti? Is it asphalt, concrete roads? So whenever we're talking about clothing, texture, material, style, and again, imperfections. What are the little things that make it realistic? Because AI is gonna try to make it perfect. We don't want it perfect, we want it real. Next, we're gonna go into lighting, which if you have been on this channel for a while, you know is probably my favorite subject when it comes to cinematography. Um, so when it comes to lighting, we're not just saying there's a light coming from the right side, coming from the sun. We are saying, is it natural or is it artificial? Or should it look natural, but it has artificial lights enhancing it? like most cinematography practices. Um, so what we want to get into is the type of light. Is it harsh? Is it harsh shadows or is, is it soft? Kind of like this lighting, how it kind of rolls around my face so that it doesn't have any sharp edges, sharp shadows. Um, directional, ambient, do we want moonlight, golden hour, sun, firelight, flickering, neon, whatever it may be. We need to talk about where the light's coming from. Are there artificial lights enhancing it? What is the quality of the light? What type of shadows is that light creating? And for any other lights that you have, give motivation behind each one and then even talk about how it's hitting the subject. Where is it hitting the subject? Here's a secret little hack. Um, if you don't know what exposure ratios are, that's something that is used mainly in film, uh, is basically the contrast between light and dark. The further apart your two numerals are, so 32 to one, eight to one, that is a harsh contrast. One to one means that the light and the shadows are the same exposure. Uh, so play around with using exposure ratios. My favorite to play with are two to one or four to one, just because it creates a soft look while still having contrast. Now we're gonna go into the camera angle and the framing. So the camera angle, again, all has a story behind it. A low angle is gonna give dominance. Uh, a high angle is going to shrink them, is going to uh, physically or metaphorically make them smaller. Here's where you can include rule of thirds, any leading lines you'd like, maybe where you'd like negative space to be. This is where you get to use your filmmaking and cinematography skill sets with AI. Now, what lens or focal characteristics are used? So here you get to talk about the type of lens you want to use, uh, as well as the focal length. 
Um, if you don't know, each type of lens has different characteristics to it. And you can just simply say a wide angle vintage lens or a telephoto clean photography lens. So now, something else that I feel helps with the realism is not having a clean digital look. You are then creating a more realistic look. Another aspect to add whenever you're working on your lenses is the aperture. A lower number, f1, is going to give you a lot of bokeh. f22 is going to give you no bokeh. So if you tell the AI, hey, this lens should be f4, you're gonna get that clean look with a little bit of blur. What are the details of the eyes? This is where we really start to dig deep. What color are the eyes? Do the eyes have like a reddish tint? Do they have a yellow tint? What do the eyelids do? Are they closed? Are they wide? Or does he have wrinkly facial features around the eyes? Eyes are what we look into as humans when we're talking to somebody. The eyes are one of the most important aspects of your character. If an eye looks off, this, the image is going to feel off. What is the condition and the texture of his skin in detail? Uh, again, pores. Are we going to see pores? Is he sweating? Is there just like an oily texture over his face? Is there any dirt, any marks? Did he just get in a fight? Is there a cut anywhere? Dive deep into the imperfections and the details of the face. What is the condition and detail of his mouth and lips? Again, just like the eyes, if somebody's talking, you may end up looking at their mouth. Having AI messing up your mouth is going to make the video or the photo look off. What is the condition and detail of the hair? Again, we're diving deep. Is it thin? Is it full, thick hair? Uh, what color is it, obviously? Is it clean or is it messy? Are there strands of hair out? If it's clean, still put strands of hair out. What is the atmospheric texture of the environment? Dust. Is there dust, particles, haze, mist? What? Are there any, the little heat waves over asphalt? Uh, start adding these. This is how light interacts with different things. So I'm gonna add haze and small particles. Now up next is color palette. Now if you've never heard me talk about color, um, color is very important. That's how where you can get most of your contrast and most of your visual interest. Uh, so I have a rule, the 60, 30, 10 rule. Basically 60% of my image should be one color, 30 is the secondary color, and then 10 pops of that color. Um, okay, should there be any filmic or processing styles applied? This is again the imperfections get into the taste of it the details how should the composition guide the viewer's eye this is perfect my subject should be centered with symmetrical details on either side of the frame wes anderson style what is the emotional impact or theme you want the final image to convey again i'm going to reinforce this we've already answered this but for this bot, if it really, if it needs more answers, it's gonna continue to ask questions until it really feels like it knows what you need uh, or what the prompt is that you're wanting to create. So lastly, do I wanna use this for mid-journey or chat GPT? I wanna use this for mid-journey. Basically, chat GPT is gonna create this prompt. Um, so this is going to be used in all of these different processes. You're basically going to type this much detail into every process. And that's why getting high quality stuff with AI still is gonna take a little bit of time, but this is what separates the good quality stuff versus the seven fingers turning into someone's leg. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go to mid journey and I'm gonna to go to create, give the image size my prompt and let's see what happens. Bro, yo, this is crazy. Bro, this is wild. Whenever you get to this stage, so you've generated it, now we need to revise. Revisions are gonna happen. It's just like the film world. Very rarely do you produce the first image or the first video and it's perfect right off the bat. Usually there are revisions. So for me, I want more aspects of the vase. So I'm gonna go into my bot or chat GPT, whatever conversation you're in, and say there is not enough attention given to the vase. I want the vase to be red. Dude, I mean, we're getting somewhere. Oh, was he bleeding out of the eyes? Holy crap, he was crying hard. Oh, is he digging in it? Oh, don't touch it. So what I'm gonna do now 
is we're going to go into the next step for this is I'm going to download one. Now, these images, I don't know if we're going to have to do this, but this is just another step. If you get a generated image and you really like how it looks, but it's just like you like the aspects, it's just not it's not there. It's not the realism is not there. What we're going to do is I'm going to plug in my photo and then I'm going to type in give me an advanced extended JSON breakdown of this image. And what it's gonna do is it's going to give a full, JSON is just a file type where it's basically going to analyze the image, give the a complete breakdown of every aspect of that image. And what you're gonna do with that once it generates this is you are going to copy that JSON file and you are gonna say re generate this photo with more realism in the human skin, the human eyes, the human hair, I'll just say in the environment. And now what ChatGPT is going to do is it's going to take that same exact image and it's it, it's going to vary just a little bit, um, but it should be fairly similar with higher details. Now, this is just a bonus. Um, I barely do the step because a lot of times mid journey gives me exactly what I'm looking for um, and it'll slightly, it'll regenerate it. It's not editing it. It has to regenerate. So it's going to be slightly different. Up next, we're going into high quality video creation with VO3. Um, so I'm going to go into Leo. I'm going to go into, oh, that sounded weird, dude. <laughs> I'm going to use Leo. He's my VO cinematographer. I'm basically gonna go in and I'm gonna say I'm ready to create. And he's going to start giving me these same exact questions. If we want a arcing shot, but we want it to look handheld, we need to let the AI know, we need to let Leo know. It's an arc shot handheld, so it knows to have that handheld look. So we're gonna go into the camera. So do we want it to look like an Ari Alexa with a Ari anamorphic lens, or do we just want an iPhone on 0.5? Personally, because of where we are right now, I always lean towards the iPhone look um, because AI, it, whenever you start trying to get to that ultra clean look, it's going to do what AI does and crunch it and clarify it. And yeah. So iPhone, iPhone or a film camera. These are the options I usually go with. Uh, what's the frame rate, shutter speed, the ISO, what are we at with your aperture, depth of field. And lastly, because we're going to be using VO3, it uses audio. So we can talk about sound design, dialogue, if you want any dialogue, which we'll get into that a little bit later. So for this scene that I've created of this fashionable guy wearing Louis Vuitton floating in a sky around amongst the clouds, I'm going to say the audio is a soft wind for an ambient sound design. I usually don't add music or anything straight out of VO because you're going to see we take it into an editing software at the end. And the bot is asking me if I, I wanted to upload a reference image, a photo, illustration, a screenshot from Shot Deck, whatever it may be. Um, I'm going to actually go with no, um, but we've got our Genesis prompt for Google VO. What you're going to do next after you have your prompt is you're going to go text to video. Um, you're actually going to stay with VO3 fast because um, it's only going to use 20 credits. And when we go through the revision process, I don't want to be using the quality credits because fast is 20 credits and quality is 100. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do fast. And me knowing that the quality one is going to look better in terms of the attention to details, I'm going to look at fast and I'm going to use that to determine my revisions and I'm gonna keep doing that until I find what I'm looking for. Bonus tip, if you want a video that is similar to the image we created in Mid Journey, uh, you can go to frames to video and just upload that first frame of the Mid Journey image um, and then type in that same prompt, which you can upload that image to chat to let him, it, them, what is chat? You can let chat know exactly what image you'll be using. Uh, the big game changer in my eyes, creating a consistent character that you can use over and over again. Uh, we are going to be using four different softwares. So where we're starting is Higgsfield. We are going to create a character in Higgsfield. 
you go to the character tab, go to create a character, and you have to upload, ideally upload between 20 to 50 photos that are clean of your face, maybe waist up, uh, maybe some full body so that whenever you're generating full body, it'll get those details right. Then you're gonna go into ChatGPT. Again, I have Higgins, which is my Higgs field bot, but you're going to, again, go into the same process. But basically what that's going to do is once you create a character, you can go to Higgs field soul, which is their image generator. You can go to your visual styles, general iPhone realistic. Uh, I've been sticking with realistic for a while. The thumbnail of this video, started from here that if you thought that was me that was not me that was also ai both images on the thumbnail were ai but this is where you can create realistic photos of yourself from there we are going to export this image and we are going to repeat the process in chat like we were working with google vo3 um, but make sure that chat knows you'll be using the frame to text and then upload the image that you created. It is going to ask you the questions accordingly. And then what you're going to do, once you get to the bottom, you now want dialogue because we are talking about having a content creator, someone who is talking. Um, you're gonna put in the dialogue that you want. Now, VO3 can only create eight seconds worth of video, so make sure the dialogue you give them is no longer than an eight second clip. And here's what's gonna happen. Once you go into VO3, after you do the revisions with Fast, and you go, quality more than likely you're gonna hear it and you're gonna be like wait there's a problem that don't sound like me dude so it's fine because what we're gonna do is you are going to take that audio into DaVinci Premiere whatever it may be extract that audio and we are now going to go into a software called 11 labs 11 labs is a beautiful resource that I'm so happy I found we're gonna clone our voice so what you're gonna do is when you create a account within 11 labs, you're gonna to go to your voices, go to my voices, and you're gonna create or clone a voice. All it's gonna do is it's gonna ask you to upload 30 minutes to two hours worth of your voice. So whether that's videos you've already recorded or if you wanna sit down and talk into your phone for an hour and a half. <laughs> the more audio you give it, the better it's gonna be. But once you create that, it's gonna take a little bit, but you are gonna take your audio, put it into 11 labs, export, and watch the magic happen. After you have your audio, now you're gonna go into your editing software and you are going to replace the audio. So now you have your voice, your face, doing what, wherever you wanna go, whatever you wanna do. So I can now recreate myself with AI and it looked 99% accurate every time with Higgs Field. Once you're in DaVinci Resolve and you match it up, I suggest adding grain, adding chromatic aberrations, adding more imperfections to ensure that it doesn't look like AI, it gets all the details out of there. But I want you to notice this video is decently long and I cut down a lot of time. The process is shorter and is more budget friendly in terms of $50,000 production sets taking three days. When it comes to content creation with your phone, the budget may still be easier for you to film with your phone. So there are benefits for AI and still practically doing everything. So with that being said, would you believe me if I told you this entire video was AI? It wasn't. <laughs> gotcha. If you wanna check out those bots, they're in the description. They're just going to make your life easier when it comes to prompt engineering for the most realistic possible results. Uh, make sure to check those out. If you liked the video, make sure to like, leave a comment, any questions you may have. Love y'all. I really do. Thank y'all for being here. Um, it only takes one to start trying out some AI video content creation. Unless you're on YouTube. You gotta still have some realism in there. Because they're cracking down. It only takes one to start making content. To start creating. It only takes one to make a change. And it only takes one to change the world. And that could be you. See you next time.